What is going on everyone? This is D22 with you today with another tutorial and today's tutorial is going to be Windows 10. I recently upgraded to Windows 10 just two days ago. Now a lot of you people are probably thinking to yourself, dude, Windows 10, didn't you have to wait for it or do you have to pay for it? In this instance I did not have to pay for it because this was a one-time upgrade fee for free and it lasts for the whole year. So from July 29th to next July 29th is the time that you can upgrade it for free but then if you don't upgrade it after that you'd have to pay hundred and nineteen dollars for the standard operating system and also the business versions of Windows 10 would probably be a little more expensive because of its business features but anyways I'm getting ahead of myself here so this is Windows 10 home and to prove to you that this is the actual operating system we're gonna right click on the Windows start button and we're gonna go system so, the system is Windows 10 Home. It's 2015. The processor is an Intel Core i7 4500U CPU 1.8 GHz processor. And I have 16 GB of memory installed and a 64 bit operating system with touch capabilities. And also, it's activated. So, I'm not a pirate. I didn't steal it. I just upgraded from Windows 8.1 to Windows 10 using the upgrade method. But sometimes it doesn't work when you want to download it and it doesn't work. So you can just make a USB drive copy of the operating system or a DVD. But my computer does not have a DVD drive. So I stuck the way of the USB system. We're going to navigate through the start menu. So the start menu is back. So you click start and then this is what you see here. So you have all apps or all programs if you are a really experienced Windows user and they range it from 1 to 9 or 0 to 9 from A to Z so the whole interface has changed a lot so it also goes through Windows apps and apps that you've installed yourself and then they have this thing on the right called life at a glance where you can connect your social feeds to it and also your emails and then they have the new internet browser here they have the new internet browser called Microsoft Edge so we're gonna click the E to go to Microsoft Edge and it's changed a lot this is an entirely new browser so everything is right in to the browser so you can do a search and you can type a web address in and it also connects your Microsoft account but I'm not connected to Wi-Fi so I can't do that right now and everything just looks so seamless here and we're gonna close that and most of the programs that I installed from the sites that I download software from I was able to import a lot of software that works with Windows 8 on here like my Camtasia software and also my Sony Vega software and I'm also learning a new software called Lightworks this is a free editing software I kid you not this version allows you to edit your own videos and import it to YouTube Unfortunately, it only allows you to import 720p, but I have a video in the description below that shows you how to get the full version of this software. So the recycle bin is square, and everything else is different. So I'm not going to show you my product key, so we're going to just put that away. Don't want you to steal my computer. So we're going to navigate the start menu. So File Explorer hasn't really changed a lot. It just allows you to explore your files and everything else. This is a relatively clean, ins well not a clean install, when I did the upgrade to Windows 10, everything was still there. So I was thankful that the upgrade went successfully. And I also had to fix my keyboard. So for the life of the glance, you got your photos here, which automatically takes you to your photos page. And I think what it does here, let's just check what it does, it allows you to look at your collections, and it also categorizes each photo into albums. So this is a screenshot that I took of the Logitech website. So that that's what happened there. And it's just critical hardware for you. But anyways, what is really good about Windows 10 is just the sleek of design. And the Action Center basically tells you all your emails at a glance. You can go tablet mode as well. So tablet mode is a new mode. And it like allows you to swipe up and down, left and right and allows you to press on certain things like it'll go to let's say health and fitness so you press on that and then it goes to the health and fitness app through the Windows operating system but then what you can also do is you can click on the notification thing again and then switch off tablet mode and then you're back to full desktop mode 
and usually these require internet connection to use. So you click on this and you can go virtual private network, airplane mode, brightness, a note. You can go to Office OneNote and you can set some notes there, set some reminders, however you like. If you have OneNote installed, that's what it does. And then you can sign in with your personal account, which we won't do right now. And then quiet hours, what this means is that it doesn't notify you of any new software being installed. And you can just disable it, and then you go all settings, and then it goes into, let's say, the system, and then also your device manager. Well, this isn't the device manager of Windows. The other one is the device manager. This is just like a quick reference to it. It also shows your connected devices to USB, and then the Bluetooth, your mouse and touchpad, also typing, and then autoplay. Autoplay just allows you to automatically play media from various devices. And you can choose between a tablet keyboard or just your regular standard keyboard. And you can move the keyboard like this, and then you can close it. And then you can also use a stylus as well to navigate through your operating system. Unless you have a Windows tablet, mine's a laptop and it has touchscreen capabilities, but I don't really like hold it with my hands. I have a mouse and a keyboard that I use with it. So it doesn't really matter to me. It only bonus features that I have on my Dell computer. So what we're gonna look at next is the task viewer. It allows you to view the tasks separately and you can also just look through. So we're gonna go, let's say, get started. When you're not sure how to use Windows 10, it just tells you what to do. It just gives you the options to make PC easy to use and then narrator. Oh, narrator, let's see how narrator works. Get started. Here. Volume up, volume down. That's Tool the... tip, volume level 40. Great, that's the narrator. So let's say you go to, uh, let's say you go to somewhere here. Using speech recognition. Mm -hmm. Windows speech recognition selected. Recognition. Let's say you want to read the whole text. Windows speech recognition lets you control your PC with your voice alone, without needing a keyboard or mouse. There's a wizard to help you get started. Just plug in your microphone, and then, in the search box, enter speech recognition and select Windows speech recognition. After you've completed the wizard, you can go through the tutorial to learn the voice. Voice. Speech oh. recognition is available only for English, okay. US and UK. Narrator. Exiting narrator. Okay. Well, now we know that it's not Microsoft Sam, sadly. But anyways, that's the narrator if you have limited vision or just trouble typing or anything like that. It's a nice accessible new feature. But most of you already knew that. But I miss Microsoft Sam when he says... Sow. Anyways, we are going to go to the File Explorer, and it's generally the same as Windows 8.1, where you can explore your files, and in, in the downloads, it's, this is where all your downloads go, that's the picture of the late, great Roddy Piper, but let's see what else is there. You go to Settings, and then you can set the time and language, Then you go here, where it says Update and Security, and then it goes through the updates that are available. Now, do they have a movie maker here? Let's see. Movie maker. I don't believe they have a movie maker here. So Windows Live Movie Maker. I don't think they do have a movie maker on Windows 10. But we can go through all apps and then find out ourselves. Now these are just the standard apps that Windows 10 originally comes with. But we, we don't know. We're just gonna find out. Oh, it looks like it, there's no... there's a voice recorder. But there's no movie maker. That's really strange. The voice recorder looks pretty simple now. Just press and click and it records your voice. Let's search movie. But that's just how to use Sony Vegas Movie Studio. That's all my stuff there. So I don't think Windows 10 comes with a full editor for making videos on YouTube. You can probably download Movie Maker for Windows 10, but I don't think it'll be compatible. You can download it through the Windows Live Essentials Pack but it's really hard to tell what to expect from Windows 10 because this is still a new operating system and probably the updates that it will do will include Movie Maker but I cannot foresee anything else happening right now because I just got this operating system myself and still have yet to discover its true capabilities. 
So let's say you want to turn it off, you press power and then all that wonderful stuff. And then you go all apps to view apps here. And then play and, ex oh, play and explore. There's the Xbox, group, there's Groove Music. Groove Music is one of the new things in Windows 10 where you can get some music and then it'll sign into your account and then you can add files. And I don't have internet right now because it won't let me connect because this Wi-Fi is absolute shite. Anyways, it will probably connect because I'm not near the access point. So it don't really matter. That's okay. I'll just connect anyway. Let's just give it a try anyway. And they also have this new assistant called Cortana, but in Canada, Cortana is not available. It's only available in Mexico and the United States and other countries, but Cortana is not available to Canada yet. So you can try searching for Cortana here, but the Cortana search in settings. We can go there, and then Cortana is turned off. Some of you might experience this problem, and then it'll say Cortana isn't supported in the region and language you've selected. Then it gives you a link to go to where it says why, and then online search isn't supported in the region. You can turn it on, but then the region options are very limited right now because Cortana does not work in Canada at the moment. It's not supported yet, but I'm pretty sure they will support it in Canada pretty soon because this operating system just came out. It's in many different countries, and a lot of people are upgrading to it so that they can be up to date with everything that's going on in the world of Windows. But anyways, that is it for this video. I know I didn't explain a lot here because I just relatively got this operating system myself and I don't know what to expect. So with that being said, there's gonna be more tutorials on my new Windows 10 system and also editing tutorials in the future. Thanks so much for watching, goodbye.